Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by early on a Sunday morning again. Um, Sunday morning chat today is about um, seasons and the effect on our orchids. Now, obviously, I'm generalising. I've, I've got an awful lot of different types of orchids in here, and some are affected more than others as, as far as seasons are concerned. Um, the thing to bear in mind is most of our orchids come from tropical areas and they get a wet season and a dry season. They don't really get the spring, summer, autumn, winter stuff that, you know, that some of us uh, live with, like me <laughs> in the UK. And um, <clears throat> those seasons, spring, summer, autumn, winter, can be quite extreme when trying to accommodate orchids that are only used to a wet dry season and those that are used to that wet dry season don't get much of a change in day length and yet it still can trigger things even though those day lengths only vary between about 11 and 13 hours it doesn't sound much but if you think of a as a as a 13 hour day if you take two hours off as a percentage of the day length, it's still quite high. It's still a change that the plants can detect. Um, but I've sort of come to realise that there's an awful lot of the orchids that don't bloom in the wet season. And the only thing I can think of is that, first of all, their blooms are going to get bashed around with a heavy rain. And also, when it's raining, the pollinators aren't flying. They're not there, are they? They're sheltering in under the leaves and in, uh, you know, trying to stay out of the wet. Otherwise their wings get wet and they can't fly. Um, so, you know, there is a, a, a possible evolutionary reason why a lot of the orchids don't bloom in the wet season. And yet some do. So some have got round it somehow. But um, you've heard me talking about the different types of forests. If you've got an evergreen forest, the only reason it can stay as an evergreen forest is the um, environmental variables don't change enough for the trees to have to dump their leaves, um, you know, like, like they do in the UK and other places. Um, but as soon as you get orchids that, you know, it mentions that they grow in deciduous forests, then they are subjected to four seasons. The reason for those four seasons is often elevation. And in the lower valleys of these deciduous forests are evergreen forests in a lot of cases. <clears throat> but as soon as you get to deciduous forests, the conditions are harsh enough that the trees dump their leaves. They can't support the leaf cover. Now, those type of orchids are more subjected to four seasons. They do get the genuine articles, probably not as extreme as in the UK. Um, you know, temperatures not dropping as low for as long and all that sort of thing. So um, those seasons have an effect and many of the orchids we grow have an annual blooming cycle. In other words, they bloom at the same time of year, roughly speaking, it's not an exact science, year in, year out providing they stay along, alive long enough to be able to tell. Um, I mean, I've got some that are genuine annual bloomers. Certainly if you look at the deciduous dendrobiums, they grow in deciduous forests, yeah? So they've got pretty harsher conditions. They dump their leaves along with the trees in a lot of cases. Sometimes they hang on to a few, but generally speaking, they drop their leaves on an annual basis along with the seasons. They follow the trees. And... Um, <clears throat> there wouldn't be a lot of point of blooming in the middle of the winter, would there? Where are the pollinators? Think about it. So, as the temperatures start to rise and the day lengths start to increase, the trees start thinking about coming back into leaf, the spring flowers come out, that's when the pollinators start getting about again. So that would be a good time to bloom, yeah? So you can sort of see how the cycle affects the plants. Now obviously when you're talking about species, sometimes getting those seasons right is critical to get a decent blooming. Um, and others, it's just not so important. But knowing the difference is important in your collection. Yeah. Um, I mean I've got cattleyas that seem to bloom at the same time of year. As I say, roughly speaking, um, last year we had an incredibly cold spring that lasted, 
yeah, and it held everything back, yeah, and then <laughs> that was followed by a heat wave. So last year was difficult, um, but if you get a mild spring with quite a few sunny days, your season in your area will come earlier, yeah. So, you know, seasons can be affected, obviously, by the weather, and they vary from year to year. Um, but then there's some orchids that just don't have a season. They bloom when they flip in like. <laughs> and classic example are the Oncidiums. Not in every case, but in a lot of cases. Um, I mean, at the moment, my it's Twinkle City out here at the moment. The Red Fantasy is about to go. Um, <clears throat> I'm waiting to repot that one along with this one um, because they're both in a media I don't like but I did sort of say that my talk needs some video clips and quite a few people suggested that having a look inside some pots might make an interesting section to that talk so I'm waiting for a nice bright day when I've got really good light and I don't have to worry so much about going out of focus and things um, uh, um, at which point I will get that one and that one out of their pot I know there's something interesting to look at in there <laughs> you'd be surprised what's going on in that pot um, so that's red fantasy twinkle that's on its way out um, the tiny twinkle up here is coming into full bloom now there's only a couple of spikes not open so uh, plenty of buds to come um, so that one's in full bloom. The Twinkle Cinnamons in full bloom. I think virtually all the buds are open on that one. Um, the one up here is not actually a true Twinkle. This is a Twinkle crossback with Soto Anum, but it's as near as damn it a Twinkle. This one's in full bloom now. And I've noticed, apart from the cinnamon one, they fade. This was quite a deep colour. And now it's fading, it's heading towards almost white. You know, the colour's just getting washed out of it as the blooms age. But the yellow stays stays true. So that, that that's good. Um, and the yellow one is joining the throng. It's just opening. So the yellow twinkle is <laughs> joining in. That's the last one. Um, now, take that one as a classic example. <clears throat> last year, that was in full bloom at the end of February in all its glory and it took a first at the um, Bournemouth Orchid Society show, Best Oncidium, um, so it did well. Now it's a little earlier this year, I mean twinkle blooms don't last an age, so for this to still be in bloom at the end of February is probably not going to happen. It'll probably be going over by then. But this plant got disturbed. You know, it, it got split and it got repotted after that blooming. So it got disturbed at the beginning of the growing season. Now that would have set it back a little bit. And I can tell, because I've had the plant a while, that the effect it's had has delayed the blooming. Now I know that sounds odd when I've just said it's in bloom earlier this year, but it's not as early as it would have been had I not disturbed it. And the tiny twinkle is probably in bloom two months earlier than last time. So is the cinnamon. Um, the others are, you know, this is, this is a re recent acquisition, so I've got no idea. But it's going to follow the path. It'll follow the pattern. So with um, quite a few of the Oncidium types, they haven't got an annual season. <coughs> they tend, oh, excuse me. They tend to mature their bulbs in sort of nine to ten months if they're growing well. So their blooming cycle is not annual. It's it, it comes into that category of whenever it's ready. And when it's ready, it'll bloom. And the time of year really doesn't matter. So there's no real season with quite a few of the Oncidiums. And, um, you know, the Twinkles are quite close to a species. It's not like they've had their season bred out of them or anything. So, um, yeah. A lot of the dend Dendrobiums are annual. They really do have a, an almost precise time. Predictable. Yeah, but not all of them. Um, the Latorias, they'll bloom when they're ready. Yeah? So, you know, there's, it, 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 you can't say across the board. Um, a lot of the continuous growers, like things like Masdevallias, Draculas, they'll bloom when they're ready. They don't really have a season. They'll bloom on and off when they're ready. You know, simple as that. Um, the Paphiopedalums that I've got, 
but virtually across the board, those that are, I've got two about to bloom here and another bud pushing on, so that's three out of the four mature plants are going to bloom. They tend to be winter bloomers, quite regular, quite predictable. Yeah, so some are, some aren't. Cattleyas, um, a lot of cattleyas are said to be winter bloomers, and, and that may be true for some of them, but some of them will bloom more than once a year. You know, so there's an element of some of the cattleyas that bloom when they're good and ready. As the bulbs mature, they bloom. And they can be pushing up new growths at many stages. You know, often the pattern with a cattleya is once a cane has actually bloomed and the blooms are gone, the new growth will start and start a new lead. But sometimes that new lead gets going long before the blooms are gone. And it, it can be well on its way before the blooms go. So that's going to come round quicker. That's not going to take a year to mature, that type of growth. So it can vary quite a bit. This hibiki is a new plant for me. So I've got no idea what the pattern's going to be. But it's not a, what I would call a deciduous dendrobium. It will eventually drop its leaves on the canes, but certainly not annually. Each year some will drop, but not necessarily the previous year's growths. I mean, this has got some old stumpy little canes that were on it when I got it, and that's where most of the blooms come from. And if you read up on this one, it does say that it blooms on leafless, uh, leafless canes. Well, yeah, I can dispute that straight away. This pushed out some blooms on canes that were leaved. So what this is going to do, I don't know to wait and see. It's got strong new growths coming out and there's several down the bottom just pushing on. These are pushing on quite well and this one's well underway. So those canes are going to mature at different times. Um, several will be close to each other but this one's pushing on way ahead of the others. Plus we've got the mature canes on it that were that size when I got it. Now that's highly likely where the blooms are going to be. When? I don't know. This was in bloom for most of the summer. Well, you saw it often enough. It was in bloom a very, very long time. But it was basically through mid to late summer. Now that may be when it's going to bloom again. It might not, but I haven't had it long enough to see that pattern. And that's what I'm always on about. You know, keeping some notes uh, most of us haven't got a good enough memory to remember each individual plant and when its blooms came out, so keep some notes. And then you can yeah, get a feeling for when something is likely to bloom. That might sound a bit not necessary, but it can help you <clears throat> determine whether your plant's still doing okay. In other words, if you've got a plant that blooms in April, regularly and then one particular April it doesn't look like it's going to bloom have a think because then there's probably a reason why it's not blooming when it normally does maybe it needs a repot you know rejuvenate it from the base upwards that sort of thing so these patterns you know are, are relatively important the telumnias bloom when they flip in like I mean, I've got more spikes now on my telumnias than I've ever had. And it's in the middle of winter. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with seasons. It's just to do with the fact that those fans on the telumnias have matured and now they're going to bloom. But there are some real regular ones in amongst my collection that, you know, are, are very predictable, you know, almost to the week. Um, my little orangus over here blooms every year. And for the last three years, it's had two spikes. Um, they start sort of late autumn. <laughs> and, and, and don't hold your breath. They take an absolute age before they get to actually open the blooms. But those blooms open around the same time every year. It's predictable. That one is. Um, some of the others, not so much. This dendrobium, moniliform. Over the years, this one has suffered a bit. So it may have lost its genuine seasonal pattern, but in my records, <clears throat> it shows that this one blooms when it likes. I mean, at the moment, it's in bloom in the middle of winter. It hasn't always done that. 
So some vary. Um, it, it, it is literally that. Um, the zygos, um, for me, I haven't had them long enough to form any pattern. I mean, these are the first ones I've ever got to bloom without actually killing the flipping things. And I mean, this one is opening up to something pretty special. And so far, this is highly fragrant, and so far, not a whiff of fragrance on this. And I think it's because we just haven't had a bright day. Um, and th there's reasons for me really wanting a bright day quite quickly. I've got some certain types of filming where I need good light. But, um, you know, this pushes up its spikes before the bulbs are mature. Yeah, about halfway up, up comes the spike, and the spike pushes on and opens before the bulb is even mature. Still got leaves to grow and open yet. So, you know, these, these, these patterns are useful. Um, <clears throat> Mycelogeny cristata, if it's going to bloom, it should be thinking about some spikes in the not too distant future. Yeah, now that's only ever bloomed once for me last year. Had a few blooms on it, which was nice. First time I'd ever seen them in my grow room. But the plant's grown on well through the season. Um, it's in a semi-resting state now. Um, my mind tells me there's two types of Cylogeny cristata that vary depending on the environment, because some of them grow in quite northerly aspects where they would get pretty damn cold in the winter. And pretty dry as well but there are others that grow a bit farther south that don't get quite such cold temperatures and that's the sort I think I've got because mine stays dark green and really plump bulbs it doesn't get that yellowy look that some get now that could be light you know an excess of light will yellow things bulbs included and <laughs> definitely leaves <laughs> but I've got a good strong healthy looking plant coming into the time of year when it should be thinking about blooming but as yet no sign of any spikes so we'll have to wait and see um, but yeah these seasons can be quite important and the one thing to remember is that <sighs> Certainly when you're looking up actual species, it's more difficult with the hybrids because you don't really get the information, quite honestly. But with the species, primary crosses, or hybrids that have still got a, a closeness to some species. You know, they're, they're not bred miles away from their original origins. Um, you will often read drier in winter. Well, all that's really telling you is that it comes from a place that has a wet and a dry season. So when the temperatures are a bit lower and the day lengths are a bit shorter, the chances are it's not growing much. So it would be a good idea to actually not keep it soaking wet. Yeah? But it's geared up to what's my plant doing? Is my plant growing? <clears throat> and if it is, it's going to need some water and feed. Now in the UK, if you're subject to the really short days, yes it might be growing, but it isn't going to be growing that vigorously. It hasn't got the day length. As fast as it wakes up and rubs its bleary little eyes, it's time to go to sleep again. So they're not growing as well as they would do with those new growths in the middle of the growing season. So adjust your watering accordingly. Plants that are not growing much, if anything, do not need to be soaking wet. And that's even if it says, should be kept constantly moist. Go steady. If it can't use that moisture, then you're going to leave your roots subject to a bit of rotting. And you'll also break your media down a lot quicker, simply because the roots aren't using the moisture. It's staying wet a lot longer than it would normally do if the plant was actively growing. So seasons are important. And um, a lot of the plants we grow are subject to those seasons in their natural environment, but not the same sort of seasons as where we might actually be growing them. So just adjust things. Use a bit of like common sense, I call it, but it's experience, it's, it's long-term growing with a list of plants and stuff. And um, there will be times where watering and certainly feeding needs to be reduced down to next to nothing because there's nothing going on with the plant. When there's stuff going on, get the old water and the feed in there. It's the old feed and water well stuff. <laughs> <clears throat> right, so that'll do for today. We'll just have a quick look at 
Dracula Bella. I haven't got a clue how long this is going to last. But you notice I've actually taken a risk and put it up in the roof. Um, for me, this is such a pleasure to have in the grow room. To tuck it down on a low shelf where I can't even see it seems a bit of a waste. Now, obviously, it's going to be a little bit warmer up there. And I do have to keep my eye on the watering because that's drying pretty quick. Um, it's getting more airflow up there. Well, probably not. The little fans are where it would have been. But, um, yeah, I've got to keep my eye on the watering. Um, it's in pure moss in a totally open basket. That's about as fast a drying effect as I could get. <laughs> and obviously this shouldn't dry out. So, uh, But, yeah, I've raised it up. Let's look at the spectacle of it while I've got it. Um, there's no sign. Of, oh, I was just going to say there's no sign of any other spikes. That could be a root. I've got a feeling that might be another spike coming. These are roots, definitely. Well, that looks like another spike. Woohoo! They do take quite a while though, so <laughs> it'll be a while before it replaces this one. But that's its first bloom. I haven't got a clue how long it's going to last. But it's blooming at a good time to last as long as possible because it's cool out here. It is the middle of winter after all. So um, it stands a chance of lasting as long as it can. That's all I can say. Um, it might only be a, a week or two. Could last a month. I haven't got a clue. But I will keep the record of it. I keep records of when a bloom first opens. And then I keep records of when it finishes. So that gives me a clue as to how long it lasts for future reference. Yeah, it's nice to know. <clears throat> Anyway, I shall leave it at that. Um, those of you that were uh, possibly anticipating a live broadcast today, well, sorry to disappoint you, but um, I've got other things to do at the time when that would need to take place. Um, I will probably do one next Sunday, but again, I'm, I'm limited to doing it. It's going to work best in daylight, and to do it at daylight, it's got to be around up past two on a Sunday afternoon. But, you know, give it another month or two and it can gradually move later in the day until eventually I can be doing it at six or seven o'clock on a Sunday, which introduces an awful lot more people capable of taking part because of the time zones. I'm very conscious of the state's time zones where most of my viewers are, you know, so. Uh, but in the winter time, that's all I can do. So maybe next week I will confirm or not, <laughs> later in the week. Okay, and uh, thanks for dropping by. I'll see you next time. I was just thinking, have I, have I missed anything that's looking quite spectacular at the moment? I don't think I have. Um, we've covered most of it on and off as we go along. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. And we'll have a look at the yellow twinkle when some of the blooms are, are more fully open. They've literally, the, those first two blooms have only just opened today. They weren't open yesterday. Um, but give it a week and a lot of the blooms will be open so we can have a better look at that. Um, and I'll see you next time. Oh, I've got to have a quick look at Make A as it's uh, looking quite good now. And the second spike with the two buds are starting to open now. Now, allegedly, allegedly, these last quite a long time. Um, that's probably the nodosa in the, in the mix because um, the brassavola blooms do tend to last quite a while. Unlike some of the cattleyas, although some do, but a lot don't. <laughs> so again, it's, only, it's blooming for the first time. I don't know how long they're gonna last. But we will find out. Again, I took a note of when the first one opened. We'll have a look and see how long it lasts. And then I'll know for next time. And, uh, yeah, talking the next time, I'll see you on one. <laughs> Bye for now.